Hello and welcome back to another episode of our Korean builds. My name is Nathan Ng and I'll guide you guys through the chaos of item builds. But before we do that, it's time to talk about something that everybody loves to hear. It's giveaway time. Follow the link in the description below, join Pro Guides Pro, and pay only $7.99 a month to access great courses and masterclasses for everything League of Legends. Once you're through with that, drop your username in the comment section below and win more than 11,000 RP. You can cancel it anytime and we'll announce the winners in the next patch rundown. If you want to know more about the masterclass, stick around till the end. Now, let's get this madness rolling. Our first build is for Miss Fortune. She's very, very happy about the changes and now has some options for an improved lethality build or an alternate crit build. For this video, we'll talk about the lethality one. This build is all about deciding fights before they even start and hitting hard. If you want to make sure this works out in the way that you could imagine it, we'll be taking First Strike, Magical Footwear, Biscuit Delivery, Cosmic Insight, Absolute Focus, and Gathering Storm for our runes. For shards, we will want two adaptive and one armor shard. Now let's talk about the build and how it works. For our mythic, we'll be choosing the improved Yumu's Ghost Blade. It's very much on theme with what Miss Fortune wants to do and adds even more for her speedy nature. In case you didn't know, Miss Fortune can save herself a lot of money by not upgrading or buying boots as she's getting quite a lot of movement speed for free from her strut. Consequently, we can just wing it with magical footwear. Yumu's adds even more speed to that and then gives us some extra punch for our very first hit. Adding the newly buffed collector to the mix makes her a really scary champion. It's almost as if she wants to be an assassin, but as an ADC. To make sure that you transition well into the mid game, you want to pick up LDR afterwards, then Bloodthirster, Edge of Night, and Berserker's Greaves whenever you see fit. Bloodthirster helps you stay healthy as you may be hit by some poke along the way, but the kicker is its bonus AD. This build features so much burst damage that any squishy champion that walks too close to you is gonna evaporate. Is that your kind of style? I'll give this one a shot and let us know how you like it. For our next build, we'll bring you guys one of the most annoying champions and make him even more awful to face. Bard has always been nightmare fuel and no one is ever happy when this champion becomes meta. Giving him cheaper item choices with Radiant Virtue or just an entirely new item with Echoes of Hylia and you will be ready. As per usual, we did some digging and testing for you so that you can save some time. For your runes, you'll want Guardian, Font of Life, Bone Plating, and Unflinching paired with Zombie Ward and Relentless Hunter. Take one Attack Speed Shard, one Adaptive, and one Armor Shard. Item-wise, buy Shard of True Ice, Boots of Swiftness, Echoes of Helia, Imperial Mandate, Knight's Vow, and Vigilant Ward Zone. As for those who might be wondering, Font of Life will be your build's enabler, and here's how. Echoes of Hylia grants you a soul shard when you deal damage. Then the shard is consumed upon dealing damage. Your empowered auto attacks apply a slow, which then debuffs a target with the Font of Life mark. After that, it's all on your allies to attack that target. Sounds simple, right? Adding Mandate on top of that adds even more bursts to this build, and allows you to basically chunk out a target instantly and provide your allies with healing and movement speed with little investment. To make sure that you're becoming a bit tankier, you're going to be enjoying the newly change Knight's Vow, which will help you and your designated ally become a lot tankier. Nevertheless, you're not really a tanky champion on your first and second item, so you really need to pay attention to what you're doing. But most importantly, don't forget that Bard is picked to dominate the map. You don't want to idle in your lane. Therefore, follow a few steps, but simple key instructions. If you happen to leave your ADC, make sure that the wave isn't slow pushing into the enemy. If you go for a roam, make sure you pay attention to your allies' waves and play around them. You can easily use a terrain to your advantage and tunnel yourself and your allies into the right play with your magical journey. The same applies to escaping out of terrible positions using alcove portals. Bard is nimble, so make sure you practice your portal spots. And last but not least, auto attack first before you even try to hit your Q. The enemy is forced to juke anyway with your passive slow, and you can make it much easier for yourself. Just be patient and let them dance in front of you until they die anyway. There are just way more tips and tricks, but we end up making the entire video just Bard, so let's move over to our next build. This build is Mimi, flashy, and absolutely messed up. Obviously, it's about the tiny master of evil. If you didn't hear about this, and well, there's a funky build that features items such as Static Shift, Storm Razor, and Lich Bane for Vegar, and we'll be talking about it right now. If in case this is already hotfixed by the time this video airs, well, war can be pretty sad, so let's hope it doesn't happen. Anyway, let's talk about the runes. You want First Strike, Magical Footwear, Futures Market, Cosmic Insight, Mana Flow Band, and Transcendence with an Ability Haste, one Adaptive, and one Defensive Shard. Just to remind you, this build is not about achieving the highest win rate, but just to break the game's established perception of certain characters and how they deal damage. With this build, your Empowered Auto Attack will deal more damage than your ultimate ability. To achieve this absolute abomination of ability, 
build, you want to get Everfrost and then swap to Lichbane later. The newly buffed Rapid on Seth Cap, Thetic Shiv, Storm Razor, Void Staff, and Sorcerer Boots. These items will grant your empowered auto attack 150% AP scaling. Given that Vedgar scaling never ends, that's quite disturbing. Adding Shiv to that, you'll greatly enhance your wave clear power. As the item really goes nuts on minions, therefore, selling out the game isn't even that hard. You might as well use minions to poke enemies with Shiv and scare them off. Funniest thing about this build is the established perception. No one would ever expect a Vegar's auto attack to one shot them, therefore people play completely differently, especially if they see that you put your spells on cooldown. In that situation, you'll literally use the enemy's conditioned thought process to kill them as a mage without cooldown typically doesn't do anything. Sounds fun? We think so too. And we've seen this build emerge in many regions, and we want to give a shout out to whoever did it first. You're a genius, a tiny, and evil one, just like Vegar. But for our next build, we're going to be hitting you guys with something different. Everyone would assume that Yasuo will be going for Infinity Edge as his mythic, but what if I told you that there's a funny one-shot variant? Gale Force Yasuo. As Yasuo gains double the crit rating, you'll be glad to hear that this item's active also scales with crit. You can pretty much imagine what happens when people get close to you. But before we talk more about items, let's highlight his runes. In this apartment, not much has changed. We have Lethal Tempo, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Last Stand, Second Wind, and Overgrowth with an attack speed, an adaptive, and a defensive shard. After obviously rushing our Berserker's Grease for a reduced cooldown on your Q, we want to go for Gale Force. Once we have that, it's time for Bloodthirster to gain even more attack damage. This build is all about bursts and nuking people using the item's actives on a ridiculously high AD value. After that, we want to get some tankiness in the mix with Death Stance. Then, transition into a Mortal Reminder and a Guardian Angel. As for how you want to use Gale Force depends heavily on the situation. On one hand, you might greed for its execute bonus and use it to kill an enemy after finishing your typical combo. On the other hand, however, it might be used as a tool for movement to get to a target. This nonetheless seems very painful from the perspective of resource usage as it's a rather high cooldown. For it to be worth it, you you really need to get something more than just a kill from my perspective. Ideally, this kill would translate into an objective or anything along those lines, but generally speaking, if you're tired of old standard builds, you should definitely try this one out as it adds an entirely new layer of gameplay to Yasuo. Moving on to Graves. Graves has always been a champion with different build ideas. Crit, Bruiser, and Lethality were all options this guy went through until most people settled for the Gore Drinker build into melee compositions. This patch, however, will be going with a Lethality build. Ghost Blade is an insanely strong option for Graves. It helps them travel around the map faster and gives him an even stronger burst damage profile. But first, let's take a glance at his runes. For mobility's sake, we still need to run Fleet Footwork. It allows us to squeeze out that little boost in movement speed that we need to stick onto our target with. To Fleet, we want Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Coup de Grasse, Eyeball Collection, and Treasure Hunter with an attack speed, an adaptive, and one health shard. For items, you want Moss Stomper Seedling or Green Smite, Yumu's Ghost Blade, Collector, Bloodthirster, Black Cleaver, Sorella's Grudge, and Defensive Boots. Fundamentally speaking, the idea behind your build is the same as Misfortunes, but it's just so much easier to snowball from the jungle perspective given the relative movement speed that you get from these items. If you think about the raw lethality that you get plus the high AD values, you'll quickly understand why this is such a solid option to look into. Especially with that bonus speed that you have, you can easily strangle out the enemy's access to resources. To our head and even from the get-go, you can look for hyper-aggressive plays that are centered around permanently invading the enemy. Doing your three red side camps into forcing a skirmish at the enemy blue buff or even just doing your red buff into the enemy gromp are all options that you can look into. If you want a more detailed advice and more thorough rundown on the other itemization options, then you should click the link in the description to become a pro. You'll get access to everything League of Legends with just $7.99 a month, stomping your laners with General Sniper's Masterclass or understanding how to not throw your lead with Sneaky's AD carry essentials. It's all one click away and don't forget about the giveaway. If that isn't enough for you, you can also get personalized coaching to tackle all the other issues that you might encounter in the game. A few clicks and you might have all the answers. Anyway, that concludes today's video. Thank you all so much for watching today's video and don't forget, leave a comment, like, and subscribe to the channel. Anyway, till next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.